you know, take a look at this. This is what they call the ring of fire for earthquakes. See how a series of quakes that started in Chile, then went over to New Zealand, and then hit Japan. We'll keep following this ring. It actually leads to the U.S. West Coast, so could that be next? Here's a fellow says it could be. With me now is Jim Berkland. Jim is a geologist who, don't scoff at this guy, he predicted the 1989 World Series quake, and he did so days before it happened. He's back with us now. Jim, very good to have you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. This is rather a, a critical time. Indeed. Jim, you said you noticed the unusual events prior to these big events, and one is all these dead fish popping up, particularly off the California coast, that that is a pattern that you see prior to quakes. Could you explain that? That's a type of thing that does happen fairly routinely. Um, animals often anticipate upcoming quakes mainly due to the changes of the magnetic field that precede quakes and is often found right after a big uh, solar flare causes uh, northern lights. The animals orient themselves like homing pigeons. I used to raise them. Um, and dogs and cats will flee homes, change their normal feeding patterns. Wild animals will come into, uh, into cities. Uh, there are many, many clues out there, and so many of my colleagues have just ignored uh, the, such factors and believe all truth comes out of a black box. But you're now, saying these, are these anomalies, yeah. the, the same anomalies you saw back at the time of the California quake at 89, you're, you're seeing being repeated now, particularly off the California coast. But, but others say, well, these are anomalies that happen all the time, and he's focusing in on this to tie it into something that might not happen. What do you say? Well, before the World Series quake, I knew we were going to have, on the 14th of October, the highest tidal force in three years, with the full moon and the close approach to the moon at the same day, or five days apart in that case. Um, as similar to happen to the quake at Loma Prieta in 1865, under identical conditions, October of 1865. And, uh, Three years prior to the World Series quake, we had even higher tides at the end of the year in 86, and I gave talks to scientific organizations and business organizations and said we should have a, uh, a quake of about 4.5 or so um, within the next time at the, after towards New Year's. And I was leaving for work, and the quake hit. Well, what are you uh, seeing now, and when do you see it then, Jim? Well, I see the highest tidal force until the year 2016 coming up on the 19th of this month. This is what I call a seismic window, and I've been calling it like a seismic window since 1974. That would, be, that would be Saturday. Out, that would be Saturday. Yes, and the next day is the, the equinoctial tides at the time of the full moon. Uh, and the, uh, the equinox, the first day of the uh, right. uh, spring. Now, it's interesting that you showed the ring of fire. In uh, eight, 1906, uh, the Japanese seismologist Omori said, you know, we had a big, a couple of big quakes in 1897 in southern Alaska, and then just a few days ago in the March of 1906, uh, they had this great earthquake in southern South America. The next time, it looks like it would be due to fill the gap in Mexico or more likely in California. Hmm. And he made that talk in about the 10th of, uh, of uh, April in 1906. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, the quake happened. And I've got so many stories now of, of animals and people that uh, weirding out, doing anticipated weird the quake. Okay, Jim, we're going to watch closely. So right now, go, go ahead, finish that thought. Well, I'll just say that uh, uh, the Northwest uh, U.S. is uh, great uh, under the under the gun, as I had called us in 1989. Wow! And uh, I, I, Southern California, you know, they just had a, a a an unusual fish wash ashore. The same thing is called a quake earthquake fish in China, in Japan. All right, we're watch closely, Jim. I think people should pay attention because because of your history. You've been right about this, Jim Berkland. Thank you very very much. My pleasure. I'd hope. I hope too.